And now, The Bonfire with Big J. Okerson and Dan Soder. Oh, man. The Bonfire is live. 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 Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. I'm Big J. Okerson. That's Dan Soder. Making me want to do a Nolte with that live like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I want the rest of you cowboys to know something. Me on the new sheriff in town. He hit me with one. His name is Reggie Hammond. <laughs> hell, Reggie. Ah, oh, me on. <laughs> I love it. He didn't even want it. He didn't want it. You made him take the money. <laughs> He's dead. You bought him a tractor. We are live in New York City. Fucking A, we are. What's the phone number? I forget in, it all the time. In, in Opie's dirty, dirty attic. Stop it. He gives us a room in his house, and it is nice. <laughs> we have a window to look out on the hallway. I mean, clean the sheets at least, bro. Dude. I blacklighted this room. It is. <laughs> it is lousy with Opie's jizz. You did some <laughs> n- Dateline Investigates? <laughs> I fucking uh, I room raided it. No. Remember that, that show room-rated. was a fucking great idea. Except it was all fake. Yeah, it should have been real. Should have been real. Find teeth. <laughs> you have teeth of a woman in your room? Oh. <laughs> Human teeth? Was there a necklace made of ears in your room? <laughs> Are you a murderer? <laughs> room Raiders Returns. <laughs> well, room Raiders Returns. Yo, Mom's saying, why don't you let me fucking hit that ass? Yo. I found it. A necklace made of teeth in your room. And then I, I found a blade, and it looks like it was rusted over, but I don't think it's rusty. I think it's human blood. <laughs> well, you should be rooming my. You should be raiding my room. Eight four four comedy nine. That's uh, if you don't, if you're not good at like putting those numbers to letters, it's eight four four two six six three three nine nine. Jesse in Indiana has a question. Yeah. What's up, Jesse? Hey, what's up? What's up, Big J? What's up, Jesse? How are you, my friend? Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, yeah, was, um, I was raised in Indiana, and uh, I see on Twitter that you guys are trying to start a beef with Bob and Tom. I don't think we're trying to start. Trying it. to start a beef is a weird Uh-oh. way to put it, but no, yeah, I've never. I've never. Uh, you don't like Bob and Tom? I'll tell you what. Uh, I, you want to get uh, Jesse starts wanting to pop off at the mouth. I, I've never, uh, Jesse. Uh, I've yeah, ne- let's bust this motherfucker. I, I, <laughs> I've never been treated shittier by a radio show. I was just treated oh. completely apathetically. Just kind of like, just fill your time and get the fuck out of here. Oh my god, there's a dude named Chick McGee that I can't stand on that show. He was, yes, that's the sports guy. I don't. Yeah. He, yeah. Uh, uh, he kind of got he got nice with me because my friend worked for the Redskins at the time, and I tried like being oh, that as the yeah. Olive Branch. Oh no, he but was then a, he then he went right back to being apathetic. Yeah, he was yeah. a salty crab when I was there. Ooh, I like how real... you talk like a like a grandpa explaining That's, how you got. No, but I'm talking about grandpa anger. He's an old guy, and he's like he had to leave early because he had to drive somewhere to host some fucking you know I got a, crab boil or some horse. I got a bingo game. I got a host of bingo. Ah, you cock suckers! I gotta get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Also coming up with a crazy parody song. Oh, man, we got a parody song for you. There's nothing sadder than watching rich, apathetic dudes like that. They just got money. They don't give a fuck. Uh, the mustache, mustache wasn't there. That's I believe that's Bob. Uh, Bob wasn't there. And uh, but yeah, Tom just couldn't. I mean, like I've never had a person have a conversation with me while not looking at me at all once. Yeah, they look across the room at each other. Not even, dude. He was just doing something else. And he pops back on. What was the, uh... I would love the, to it find... It was the fucking Wayne's World. Remember Harry yeah. Shearer? Uh-huh. 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 Handsome Dan. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was like that. And then when... Wayne's everyone, World. And then Wayne's when everyone World. Left, cool. All right. Everyone left the room. You're a tool. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. 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 Everyone left the room during the breaks, and then, like, the girl on the show would sit there with me, and she'd be like, he's an asshole. Throw me in the bus. I'd, there's stupid jokes. Shut trying up. to tell a story. And they, Are you serious? I, write, oh, yeah. Dude, that is so great. These assholes, Bob. Don't take it personal. Cause they're just assholes. I mean, so she knew she could tell that they were just being dicks to you. But she wasn't super much sweeter. She was like, she's like, like, listen, honey, you get hey, so you know, kiddo, this is the horse shit that is my life. She's <laughs> like a seasoned stripper, and you're the new dancer. Exactly. Here's what happens. It's like that scene in Showgirls. Suck them off, but don't swallow. <laughs> You want to take my job, you cocksucker? You got to come take it. <laughs> Grab it out of my hands. I do, I do weather. I also do traffic. <laughs> so I don't think there is as much of beef as it is that we'll just, you know. I'd like to be very public about how much of a shitty show I think that is. There you go. 
It's a junk show. I, I, I don't know. Maybe it was something at some point, but they want you to do horse shit. Yeah. And then they want to oh, and they com- want to continue to present horse shit. It's all But it comes from the time where comedy was just about selling tickets and not, you know what I mean, like that kind of comedy boom era where radio stations had deals with the clubs. It's all that kind of era that's kind of phasing out. Well, you know what it is? If you're going to if you're going to follow the Howard Stern template, you can't because you, you, they do it for so long, you get bitter in that template, and then it just falls apart, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you lose the funny. Well, also, it doesn't and feel you, like, it feels like you're being, like, they're counting down the time. That's what every, the, the only time I did the show, mm-hmm. I felt like they were just counting the time down until everyone left. Just hoping it goes away. Yeah, Pat Dixon came in, who's a, a big, like, they're fans of him, and to watch to watch them light up when he walked in. Like, he's a buddy of mine, buddy of yours. I think he's fucking sure. hilarious. And he came in, and I was excited to see Pat. But then to watch them change their mood because he came in, they're like, "Ah, Pat's here! This fucking big-headed freak!" I wonder if he does their thing, or I think, if he, I, think I don't know. I mean, I think, or if, he, or if he just like he's he's like you know gotten past that, and you it's like, look, maybe it's a great show if they would trust you to be a funny fucking professional and like be able to do. See that's my what it is you came you in just school. cursed. You can't be professional. <laughs> no, I don't have to be professional here. <laughs> This is where I come. This is my toy box. This is where I poop in my sand. And <laughs> yeah. I cover it up. I do what I want here. I pee on it's your my leg. world. It's my world. I, you can't have it. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, he hung up, but thanks for calling in, Jesse. Fuck those dudes. Yeah, fuck Bob and Tom. There it is. And, you know, if you're a big bonfire fan, you live in the area, you want to let them know, let them know. Man. Crackle, crackle. Maybe throw a bag of shit at them. <laughs> <laughs> nah, no physical violence. Ah, you know what? If you throw a bag of shit near them... Hilarious. No, don't do any of that, but do all of that. No one's going to throw back. Phil in Canada, I just got back from Vancouver, and this guy is asking this question like he set me up. What's up, Phil? Hey, man. So, yeah, I really enjoyed the show, and, like, uh, I was going to give you some weed after the show, but... You should have. Would you ever take trancher weed again? Yes, I'm dumb. I lock... Here's what I do when people give me drugs. I look in their eyes, I go, this is okay, right? Mm -hmm. This is like some training day yeah. shit. So yeah, I didn't know wet. you like. Yeah, so I was gonna say, oh, soda! I didn't know you like to get wet. Yeah, Brad. Uh, Brad shows up. He's like, hey, what's up? My name is uh, my name's Carl. Here's drugs. Yeah, dude. I would have. I would have just smoked weed with you. Shit. It's all right, dude. <laughs> That's all right, buddy. That was a great reaction. Yeah, I love that reaction. Well, next time I'm up there. Yeah, man, for sure. So I'll really be cool. in Vancouver too, and I'll also take a stranger weed. Jay loves stranger yeah. weed. We sure. both do. smoke together. Mm-hmm. Get me stoned enough, you can probably work your way into my room, play some video games. I mean, depending on how good you are at PS4 and Madden, that's a two-parter question. We could be hanging out all weekend. Okay. <laughs> okay. All I'm saying is, yeah, bring Jay. a sleeping bag, Phil. <laughs> yeah, hope you like staying up late and watching movies. <laughs> Cause we're best friends now. <laughs> it's like step brothers. Did we just become best friends? Phil, thanks for calling, buddy. All right. It's so nice to get a nice calls from Phil and yeah. uh, and yeah. everybody because it uh, our caller went haywire. Last if you week. don't, it's, if, it's been it's, it's if been you're a, just a part, it's been a buzz. Yeah, if you if you're just a part time listener, if you're not a camper and you don't know, last week we had a caller who called in with a very interesting story. That we wanted to talk Cause about. So, so, well, we, you know, a little inside baseball here. We've got the call screen that has yeah. like a general idea of what it is the caller wants to talk about. Yes. And it was, it was put on the call screen by Merc Face Andy. Or no, it wasn't Merc Face Andy. Hugo. Hugo. Sure. And he said. Wait, what? What is it? Steve. Steve. Oh, Steve. Oh, yeah. Steve was there. Steve, and Steve, cause Steve was like, yeah, it sounded legit. <laughs> Who's Hugo? I don't know why I said Hugo. <laughs> I thought he goes, Hugo. I go, okay, Hugo. I'm pretty high when we do the show sometimes. By the way, I was okay with Hugo, too. When you said it, I was like, I was like, Hugo, like, what do you say? He said Hugo? I'm like, all right, let's go. Like, thank God. But thank God, by the way, we cleaned that up before I hugged that guy at the end of the show. I'm like, Hugo, another good one in the books, buddy. I go where Hugo. <laughs> He's like, my name's Steve. You're like, fuck. Ooh, but I call you Hugo. Too bad, because your name now is Hugo. I didn't say I've been calling you Hugo. <laughs> Everyone calls you Hugo behind your back. <laughs> oh, so you're a Hugo for sure. <laughs> Get the face of a Hugo. So he called in with Hugo. Called... <laughs> Which, by the way, his name is just Hugo. <laughs> yeah, now. sorry, Steve. You're Hugo now. Um, but he 
said that he had a, like a crazy interesting story. What was it that he w- caught a girl masturbating? We were, we were hoping for a guy, a story of a guy catching a girl masturbating. Yeah. And he had one. Yeah. And he called in and he so yeah, so we're going to talk about this right now. We're going to do this shit right, right now. Right. We, we have to talk. This is great. Because I've never, with bad thoughts, by the way, I enjoyed that call so much. You never explained what happened. He flipped. He so, went off on Well, us. what happened was, we should explain what happened was, was that we, he called in, Brad had a, a hilarious voice. voice. Hey, what's up, guys? Just out here. And, and he, he's telling us, you know, he, all the classic, like, great things of that. I was, love you guys. I smoked Just weed. smoked, yeah, just burned one. Oh, I just got an awesome rip curl, bro. <laughs> it's all here. Uh, the legal weed, Seattle. He was, it was, and it was I, good times. And I like to do voices. Yes. And mock people's voices because I've been mocked. So incredibly much with my weird caveman voice. I think you're putting too much evil on it. I didn't mock him. I think we're doing radio. Yeah. And he had a funny voice, and we were playing along. Thanks. We, now what, a lot of times, and, and Christine will give me shit about this, is that as comics, sometimes we don't have a think, like, a, we don't really think about someone really melting down about being ball busted. Yes, yes. I completely so, agree. Uh, we don't even think we're ball busting. At that point, we're like, oh, isn't this funny? It was Brad. What a great. We're, we're like almost like, what a great voice he has. Yeah. Fun thing to do. Not in a mean way, but in a fun way of like. We're, we're like busting ball. We I can riff on it. Didn't call him a jerk off. No, I said he had a dead girlfriend, which, I mean, God, if that is the truth. Maybe that's what it was, but I don't know. But what a lot of people said to me was that they said, we don't realize it was a Brad call with the story. He was a fan. He was excited to talk. And then we just like, in his eyes, we just shit on him for. And in, without exaggeration, two straight minutes. Okay, that's a long time. That's almost a full boxing round. Now, uh, my feeling still is like, Brad, you get a vibe of what's happening here. You should probably not have been upset about that. And, yeah. And, and you should also know that there's no malicious intent. None. However, especially if I guess the name of your dead girlfriend, like we're, like we're so doing great. a seance. Stacy? No. How did you know? <laughs> but you couldn't have. I didn't tell your call screener that. You couldn't know. Hugo wouldn't know that. <laughs> I told him a fiction. Hugo has no idea. <laughs> so, uh, so he, so as soon as uh, we stopped doing the voice for t- a good couple minutes, I said, Brad, anyway, I'm sorry, but we got way off tangent there. Go ahead, man. I want to hear the story. This is an awesome story. And uh, it was. 30 seconds before I realized, not only was he not telling the story, he was just fucking ripping ass into us. I mean, running down a hill fast. <laughs> like, that's how mad he got. Like, tumbling down a hill. Um, you want to hear that audio? Yeah. Oh, you have it? Yeah, please, please. It was just Brad turning on you. Okay. Yeah, so let's get on for a second. You guys are a bunch of, like, 350-pound, like, fucking obese guys talking about watching people piss. Like, that's super fucked up, man. You guys are probably getting paid fuck all to sit around all day and talk on the radio like a bunch of assholes. Maybe you should do something with your life, fucking contribute or something like that. I've been listening to you guys just talk about, you know, how you're getting off to your circle jerk audience, a bunch of fucking 20-year-old kids. Uh, all I need are some tasty waves, cool buzz, <laughs> and I'm fine. Ah, Lou, you are the best. <laughs> um, yeah, he, yeah, you got angry. But you know what's great is he was just saying things that he thought in a surfer's mind. He was saying all the things that surfers think are bad. Yeah, You're I'm just so, like, I, sitting around, I'm so fully in, clothed. I'm so insecure that uh, that I think he just was like, describing me twice. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean this for Jay, and only Jay, times two, double up. <laughs> double Jay. I hope I'm inside Jay's brains, just pulling cords. <laughs> yeah, to me, that was like totally uh, a dumb hot guy saying what he thinks. Um, See, like, so I bet Brad's a really good looking dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that, that was like, pretty easy. Yeah, because he was like, you guys are like old and you're fat and you're like fully clothed and you're just touching your own dick, Although, which I haven't done since uh, the second Clinton administration. But it is hilarious, by the way, that uh, since it's been talked about more than once yes. since even again, is that uh, he does point the thing as he goes, he goes, you guys are sitting around watching girls piss? I mean, like, that's mm. fucked up, man. And he's like, no, he did that kind of point there. Yeah. <laughs> Brad, you came out and first off, nailed it. <laughs> Brad, let me tell you where you lost everybody. 
<laughs> when you got off point. If you would have just milked that point, I'd be like, just, oh. what is wrong with you guys watching girls pee, man? Honestly, bro. I mean, I know it's a meetup spot for you guys to get out of the club. Oh, fuck. We're watching chicks squirt and <laughs> <laughs> squirt in USA. <laughs> watching girls pee and like California. Oh fuck. He was so angry, man, it made me laugh. I was so bummed he hung up. Um, I'd like to put out that uh by all means, Brad, if you're out there. Please call eight four four. Please call in two six. We could hash this thing out. Three three nine nine. It needs to happen. We spoke to your father. He doesn't seem to be a fan of yours. Eight four four comedy nine. Jake in Milwaukee. You think uh what's you, on, Hey, what's up, dude? Thanks for calling in. Yeah, hey, listen, um I'm gonna stop by saying I absolutely love the show, love you guys. You're fucking hilarious. You're the highlight of my Mondays and Wednesdays. Thank you, Jake. Uh, I've been listening since day one. And let me just say, I was last last week when when uh, fuck Brad, but when he <laughs> came on, all he did was troll you. Oh, you he think that trolled. was a troll? Yeah, dude. Like he sat on hold for how long to get on and just start <sighs> with a bullshit story. Well, and then he, he, it wasn't like, that long. Well, hold the on. Story, the story idea we wanted to hear. Yeah, but that's. Jake's bringing up a point that I felt mm -hmm. that it was all a ruse to get through Hugo to get on that sweet sweet weight line. Yeah, and right. he's not he's not going to call back. He's the same guy that sits on YouTube. And yes, um, all those bullshit comments. Jake, on Jake and coming with that mil people. Jake's coming with that Milwaukee knowledge. Might be right, but again, is there not, not to make a big deal? What you, actually the fun of it's been since is that uh, our discussion is to. Uh, Call our call people that hate the show Brads, yeah. <laughs> which is just that's a derogatory term now in bonfire such a, language. Such a perfect name. And if you happen to be a camper <laughs> that has the name Brad, all you have to do now is defer to your middle name. <laughs> if you don't you have, have a middle to name, give up Brad. you have to give up Brad. If you don't have a middle name, you call in and Jay and I will baptize you in the bonfire. I think it's also fair to say if you're a Brad who is a fan, you call in. Yes, that you could all uh, you just give us uh, a one, like you know. Couple sentence synopsis of why you get a Brad pass. Brad pass, and then you could be a Brad fan. It, it, it won't take much. No, not at all. I mean, it won't take. It's almost like getting TSA pre-approved. It's just an annoying process. Seventy-five dollars, and it's you send in seventy-five bucks. A short <laughs> interview, just a cash. No big deal. We can take care of this. Jake, thanks for calling in, dude, and thanks for listening. Hey, can I ask you guys something real quick before I hang up? Sure. Yeah. Not to. Uh, flip script or change subjects but you guys never did that fago challenge did you no we got to do the fago challenge we do all right well listen let me just throw this at you real quick okay i happened to work for the insane clown posse for eight years yes uh please. did all crazy shit i've been to every game can i can i ask uh, you real quick jake what was your juggalo yeah. name <laughs> you don't want to know yes i oh, do so bad we want to know <laughs> that's what i asked you what's oh. I, I gotta know your juggalo name hey, listen, it, there's a backstory to that. They actually ended up making me one of the artist hype men awesome. on stage. And the stage name that Joe, Violent J from the uh, Insane Clown Posse, gave me was Cousin Cletus. Okay. <laughs> Love it. Well, the guess so what, Jake? There was another guy named Boondocks. <laughs> yeah, you're no longer Jake from Milwaukee. You're Cousin Cletus. you got to call him his Cousin Cletus from now on. <laughs> yeah, especially if you want to bring up the Fago Challenge. I definitely challenge. will. But let me, let me just finish up real quick. I'll talk, when... Um, about four years after I started working for him, and I was I was on stage doing the clown shit, spraying Fago on the crowd and whatever. Uh, we actually had to switch from whatever we got from Fago to specifically diet Fago because it was destroying the sets, it was <laughs> destroying the costumes. Like that shit has so much sugar in it; it'll actually eat away at material. So it's like the alien blood <laughs> in Aliens. <laughs> like it'll fucking burn That's through. Yeah. <laughs> it'll burn through wires. <laughs> <laughs> we have yeah. to do a, we have a to do a spray. Yeah, we have to do a Riley thing where the mouth comes Holy out. Holy like, shit! <laughs> <laughs> with Fago, <laughs> it's aliens. Yeah. yeah, keep that in mind before you're dumping gallons of it. I mean, we don't want to do <laughs> gallons. I think we were just going to split a six pack and then feel real sick for the whole show. It's really just well, pure sugar, huh? Happen. Yeah, so it's, and the way you are, you'll probably end up shitting your pants. I'm just saying. Yeah, but I got my squat. I'll bring my uh, portable squatty potty. You got a portable one? Yeah, dude. You got it. It was a gift that my ex-girlfriend, it was the last gift my ex-girlfriend got me. Oh, that's sweet. She got me a fucking uh, inflatable squatty potty. You took, a, you took a full elimination dump, and then you were like, oh, you know, there's still a little nugget in there. That's you, bitch. Get out of my life. <laughs> I got to clean myself up. Wait, let me get in posture for it. Let me get my knees to my shoulders. <laughs> and and you, you, you are good. You got to put your knees, to your, <laughs> your knees to your shoulders before you broke up? Yeah. We're through. Uh,
<sighs> Let me line up my colon on this one. Um, <laughs> dude, Cletus, cut his cousin Cletus, thank you very much for calling in. And I appreciate it, guys. Love you. Please call in again soon. Thanks, Jake. Oh, cousin Cletus. Yeah. I'll never make a mistake. I'll slap you in the mouth. I'll never, too. I'll never make you a mistake. You ever fucking again. make me look like an asshole again? <laughs> you look like me like an asshole back you there. You make me look like an asshole. You know, whenever I go, I was in Vancouver last weekend, and uh, just, you've gotten to the comedy mix. Just a fucking awesome time. Mm. Al Madrigal was in town. Dan St. Germain. We had a good hangout. What were they doing? Al's filming something, and Dan St. Germain was working the other club. He's working the Yuck Yucks. So we went and hung out. But then I come back to the United States, and every time I come back to New York, if I've been gone for more than two days, I turn on New York One mm-hmm. while I'm unpacking, and it just always makes me laugh. Why? Because there's always a guy that they're interviewing that's like, <laughs> like yeah, I was writing down there on the thing, on the top of thing. It just makes me fucking giggle so goddamn hard every time I'm unpacking. Yeah, well, pretty windy. That's what you're doing on that. Reporting live in Queens about a bridge structure. And they're like, well, you know, the bridges, there shouldn't be bridges because I'm from New York and I was my dad's from New York and I'm New York, New York, New York. What happened to all the bridges? Why do people got to move here? You're not a real New Yorker. Now they gotta stretch out the bridges. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna widen up all of them. Wait, what about the bridges? Uh, Nick, Nick in Colorado, you're on the bonfire, buddy. Soder, dude. What's up, dude? I, Don't learn a lesson. I just wanted to call in and say I absolutely love you guys and fuck Brad. That guy sucks. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> Let's find him. I just him. to say, so rep- represent for Colorado, man. You're killing it. And Big J, I love it. I love, oh, I love thanks, you man. Doing. You're a very nice man. Thanks, Nick. Dan Soder. Holding Dan. down the A-Town. Colorado legend. Aurora. Everyone's going to be like, I played Pop Warner with that guy. That guy no sucked. Way. <laughs> that yeah, we, guy sucked. We beat that guy's team 116 to zero, which is a real thing. Oh, that was a cool call. Yeah, dude. Thanks, Nick. For every Brad, there's fucking 100 it's, Nicks. It's like Hydra. Chop off a Brad and five <laughs> Nicks appear. <laughs> <laughs> Brad, you've sealed your fate. Says, Brad, don't you understand? You if anybody wants to come in with a, uh, I think it should be pretty easy work. If anybody wants to come with an acronym for Brad's. Mm. For what that could stand for, also. I bet, I bet Sarah McPants will have one like by the end of the hour. Why is she not calling in? Does she only live her life on Twitter? I don't know, but I like it. <laughs> she makes me laugh. Leave her on Twitter. But why can't she cross over formats? I like oh, Sarah McPants. Okay. Cool. Frequent, huh? frequent tweeter. I love that. Those are the people that keep our name out there. Yeah. Because yeah. I am not great at it. You at know, all. even you just saying that, I forgot to tweet out about the show. <laughs> you piece of shit. Me too. Okay. Uh, Seth in Texas. I mean, while we're just while we're just yeah, we we'll get through the Brad piling show. up on Brad here. Yeah, we got to get we got to get through our system, campers. That's why we're talking about it because it was traumatic. We're hashing it out, Seth. They, yeah, they tied us. What's up, Seth? Hey, what's up, guys? What's up, dude? How are you? Hey, man, I'm doing great. Uh, love the show. Listen all the time. Um, Big J, Dan, you guys make my drives awesome. I have to drive 160 miles a day for work. Oh shit! Uh, yes. So a couple days a week. It's awesome. Right. Hey, oh, well, first off, seriously, fuck Brad. Yeah, Brad. Bodies, everyone I've ever met from Washington. Okay. <laughs> nice. Oh. And every Brad I've ever met, which are also total assholes, so well, double fuck them. Well, again, though, we give Brad passes here at the bonfire, Seth. We got to take every Brad as an individual. Just like the Bible says, take Brad for who Brad is. Brad, the yeah. beast with two backs. <laughs> Born from the blood <laughs> of the innocent and raised on the bones of... All right, sorry. <laughs> And also, for your acronym, you guys were asking for a Brad acronym? Yeah. Bitch boys writing all the dicks. Oh. <sighs> Jacob, Murkface, Andy, someone write that down. Bitch, Bitch boys. boys riding all the dicks. That's double B-Rad, though. And then, uh, no, we, no, we, we hyphen it. One word. Bitch boys. Bitch boy, one word. I'm okay, okay with that. Bitch boy riding all the dicks. The the has to be lowercase all. Yes. For a true acronym. Yeah. Dude, it's so funny watching Jacob write this down. Seth, we got it noted, buddy. Bitch boys ride all the (laughs) dicks. Okay, cool. Seth, you're a good man, and you're definitely not a Brad. All right, well, awesome. You know, I'm sorry I had to miss the oddball tour. I was hoping to go last weekend, but then I found out it wasn't last weekend. (laughs) (laughs) Because it shows in the future. (laughs) Uh, Absolutely. We'll be out in Texas uh, very soon, both of us, I'm sure of it. Well, awesome. Thanks for taking my call, guys. You guys, Seth, have a good one, buddy. Yeah, Texas has got... um. Bucks me ladies. 
Mm. Might have to do the TF mm. across America through there. Buxom. Buxom. I like when you talk like that. What? A buxom woman. A bu- chest heavy? I need heavy? a real buxom woman. <laughs> <laughs> what young man says that still? Chest heavy. Happen. What, buxomy? Voluptuous. She's yeah. very voluptuous. That's how you describe. You just go, dick. Yo, she dick. Yo, that's a thick ass bitch. <laughs> oh, no, no. Like, she dick. Should I try cat calling with that? Oh, miss, you are quite buxom. Buxom. Vervacious. Oh, no, I was with your regular voice. Goes, miss. Man, you are buxom. <laughs> wow. You get hit. Voluptuous, huh? Oh man, look at you! you I are... mean, va 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 voom. <laughs> <laughs> like, why are you doing a <laughs> doing a slide whistle? <laughs> why are you doing cartoon noise at me, sir? <laughs> Can I just say a va 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 voom? Oh no! Uh, We're right. half hour. Is it time for our first break? Time for our break. Break. I, I look up, I'm looking at the adults in the room. And they, no one's paying attention to us. Lou doesn't give a shit. We have five more minutes. That's what happens when you come in all. here with Lou Dog after you dropped a previous episode of Pure Fire. <laughs> you don't care anymore. <clears throat> we'll be right back. No. Okay. <laughs> yep. Oh, are we still on? Oh, Leave me. it on. No, I like it. Leave the mistake. <laughs> no, I mean, it's your show, dog. No. Jacob just, said five minutes. Clearly, Lou doesn't respect what I say. No, no, it was hilarious because Jacob, what did Jacob said, said five minutes. I said five minutes, too, but you were doing that fucking sick-ass Jamaican thing. Thank you, bro. I don't go with negativity. I know. No, it was done with all good intent. But, like, you really mean it? Dude, you were firing off, bro. Oh, come on. Okay, we, why would you not take this? We're going to get back to support right here. Kay in North Carolina. Then we go to break. Yes, yes, yes. Hi, Kay. Hey, what's up? Ethan, how are you? Good. Uh, how are y'all? Just want to tell y'all, I fucking love your show, and Brad's a fucking Brad hole. Yeah, True Brad that. hole. I like a Brad hole, too. Fucking Brad hole. <laughs> you fucking Brad hole. <laughs> yeah, it's a real Brad hole. Yeah, it rolls off. Kay, it says here you also have a squatty potty. Is that true? Yes. I, my girlfriend bought it for me. She says it'll... Uh, what you fucking say? Oh, it'll it'll help. You know, you be more regular and not have a hemorrhoid and all kind of shit. And, do you have Do you have butt you grapes? Know? Do you have hemorrhoids? No. Okay. But she doesn't want me to get them. Oh, Fair. Yeah. Yeah, that's a woman that cares. I've been trying about to get you. my I've been trying to get my dad to use it, and he's like, "Yeah, fuck you." Have you used it yet? Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, because you drop how they, logs. How do they do that shit in fucking Japan? I don't know, because they know how to drop logs. They shouldn't call it the Squatty Potty. They should call it the Lumberjack. Because <laughs> all you're going to do is drop <laughs> logs. Shred logs. <laughs> He's going to shred um, logs. Kay, K- what's it like? Explain it, please. Because Soda doesn't do a good job. He goes, Bullshit. You go, no, you don't. You just go, no, it's just great. It's just really great. You'll see. You have, you have a lot of... You'll I'm see like, like I'm trying to get you to join I'm a like, cult. What's the feeling different? I mean, when I go to the bathroom, poop falls out of my ass. Yeah, it's different. Dude, okay, you, you know what? The way you just said that, poop falls out of your ass. I push. Poop glides out of your ass with the squatty potty. Because your knees are up here, so your your poop's basically now on... A slip and slide. It's on a it's on a water slide, and it just slides out your butt. Whole log. Like that firm. <laughs> like it hits the toilet bowl. You get up, and you see it come out of the water come like on. a gator Does about it... to attack. <laughs> Got his head out the water. Like it coils up on you. No, dude, straight out. No, no coil. No, in the bowl, it's got a coil. What kind of a that, deep bowl do you have? Dude, it just slides right in the fucking hole. It goes in the... T- <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. It goes right into the... It yeah. starts swimming, swimming downstream. Yeah, like a salmon that knows where it's going. I'm not waiting for a flush. No, it's going. And then it pops out of the water because it goes right to your butt because it's one complete log. <laughs> how are you not... Cons- how are you not understanding? I, I, this is the, this is, it's a revolution in... But Kay, Kay, you say it's weird. You're not really advocating. I'm still getting used to it. I only had it for about a month. Yeah, okay. You just gotta let it learn how to breathe. Do is it so good that you give it? You use it every time you can, or are there times where it's like, oh, I just want to take a normal shit this time. I don't have the patience. I use it every time I'm at home. Boom. Okay. And I'll tell you this: I use it every time I'm at home. Very often. I, I do fun. like 500 miles a day. Jesus. Oh, really? Good for you, Kay. You got to get the inflatable one, like Soder has. Yeah, dude. Twenty five bucks. Also, I like that all of our callers, the mileage of their day drives are co- yeah. considerably dropping. Those guys, like, I drive two thousand miles a day. Uh, hey, Kay, when you're at one of those truck stops, you could probably have a lot lizard uh, s- squat in front of you, and you could put your feet up on her. A human squatty a potty. Human squatty potty. <laughs> That's genius. <laughs> She's like, hey, 
You want to you want to hang out? He goes, no. But what I do want to do is far more disturbing than what you thought I was going to want to do. <laughs> well, I mean, if Kay asks, I mean, she needs to be able to use a lot lizard. She's a girl, so yeah. she can't like uh, a woman. Sorry, she's a woman. It would, it would work. Yeah. Kay, give me yeah. do me a favor. Do you call us back what? after you have, <laughs> you, so after you... you use a human lot lizard <laughs> squatty potty? Sure. Thank you. Play my play. Uh, Please. You are a good person. And if you take a cell phone picture for it, I'll throw in 20 more bucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. All right. Thanks, Kay. Okay, thanks for calling. Thank you. We will be right back with the bonfire. Hey, campers. If you've ever spent a night on really luxurious bedding, you know how amazing you feel the next day. Oh, incredible. And I have. A whole new person. Some hotels, man, really go above and beyond. Yeah, they nail it. And you can tell the differences. And you got to go home and you're like, my life sucks. Yeah, you're like, cool, I sleep on uh, paper. <laughs> but with department stores and their 800% markups, you'd have to pay a fortune to afford them. Well, not if you buy sheets from Bowen Branch. Bowen Branch linens are made from the finest organic cotton in the world, and you won't believe how soft they are. Everyone falls in love with them, even three U.S. presidents. And the obscene department store markups? Bowen Branch cuts that out, all that nonsense, by selling online at BowenBranch.com. So it's just, an online business. Just online. Only online is where you can get Bowen Branch. I believe it's only online, which is retarded to I mean, sell it in stores. Yeah. If you can do it all by yourself, you don't have to pay anything else. you got to pay Come. those people to take your product. This is good business. And then they recover. Yeah, it's a whole it's good business. goddamn ordeal. Getting rid of the middleman. Who needs it? BowenBranch.com, you get high-end thousand-dollar luxury linens for just a couple of hundred bucks. Can you imagine being naked rolling around on those? I can. Just boning up. Yeah, you know what I can? What? Because I got a pair. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know if they're called a pair. A pair of sheets. <laughs> yeah. That's classy Okerson for you. I got a pair of sheets. <laughs> what? Um, no, I have a set of Bowen Branch. I don't. Yeah, while well, they send to me, knowing that I like to sleep <laughs> nude, you are more of a short scar. I have a cap on. I like to really roll around like a manatee <laughs> and really explore the space. <laughs> <laughs> Bowen Branch is so confident that you'll love their sheets that you can try them risk-free for 30 nights. And it gets better. What? If you order right now, they'll give you $50 off a set of sheets plus free shipping. Just go to BowenBranch.com and use promo code BONFIRE. Let's do it. That's right. Fifty dollars towards a sheet set by going to Bowen Branch. That's B O L L and Branch dot com and use the promo code Bonfire. Done. And now back to the Bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. Yeah, Eagles of Death Metal Monday. It's the Bonfire. Sirius XM Radio ninety five. I'm Dan Soder. That's Big J Okerson. Hey. That song's anything except the truth from the Eagles of Death Metal. One of my favorite bands. Also involving one of my favorite musicians, Joshua Homme from Quiz of the Stone Age. Josh, you are so formal. Hey, I tried to be formal, man. I don't Maybe know. Are angry mother at him right I now? I don't know him. I can't, use the, I can't use the form. I have to use the formal. I can't use the... Joshua, will you pick one project Joshua. to move forward? Now, <laughs> in the car. Now. <laughs> will you stop starting 55 B bands? <laughs> hey, you shut up. You love all of them. I love all of them. Them Crooked Vultures was Dave Grohl and John Paul Jones. Is uh, that a B-band to you? No, no I, maybe, I meant like, I thought it was Things Queens of the Stone Age. Yes. But it, it, this is his other band. He did, right. So he did Queens of the Stone Age, and then... They're done? No. no they're just on hiatus, and he they made a new album, Zipper I Down. I hate that word. Well, I'm on a hiatus from liking you right now. You How do you mean feel that. about that? I, I don't mean that at I all. never mean that. I'm sorry for yelling. <laughs> let's get back together on the same page. Fuck let's Brad. just <laughs> let's rip let's rip through these here because we got uh uh the acronyms are going to be flying in here. So let's Jacob, go. you ready to write these down? Ready. If hey, you Jacob, miss one up, I'm Jacob's our your, stenographer. I'm going to beat I'm going to burn your feet. This seems up. like more of a Hugo job, but I guess he's dicking off somewhere. Yeah, it's Hugo being Hugo. Will, Long yeah. Island's got a Brad acronym. Yo, what's going on, guys? Hey, buddy. Yeah, I got to say, when that guy called in, I, I love it when people do that kind of stupid shit on radio. It's like, why do you think that's a good time to pull out your soapbox and stand in a crowd and yeah. shout against the one thing that brought everybody together? Like, <laughs> just, what an asshole. Yeah, it's like but, getting uh, up at the running of bulls and trying to talk about <laughs> uh, fucking uh, Occupy Wall Street. It's like, <laughs> like, what the fuck are you doing, man? What are you going to get out of this? Yeah. We do, but uh, so everyone's going to use bitch for B. Okay. So I'm going to go off the Back to the Future hype. That's still kind of fresh. Okay. Say, say butthead raging against debauchery. 
All right. I like it. Yeah, because he taught he was angry about the pee. Butt raging head. against and there's something debauchery. About, there's something about using an old, sweet term in a mean way that makes it just a little more mean. Yeah. Like yeah. Butthead. Well, B's got a, a world of ideas, though. Beep, 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 beep. I assumed it was going to be beep, bonfire. Beep, 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 go Bayside. Oh, you thought it was going to be... Yeah, man, I told you. I was like, my thing... We kind of just kind of brainstorm one before, and I was like, like bonfire. Because it's people who hate the show, so it would be like bonfire... Rejected ass, ass dicks. <laughs> dicks. <laughs> Thanks, Will. No problem. Peace, guys. Take care, man. Shane, North Cackalack. We're going to oh, no, rapid no. fire in these days. Hey, what's up, Shane? <laughs> I'm going to take a stab at this Brad acronym. Please. Oh, you sound so relaxed right now. Oh, I'm about to shut down for the night. Been driving all day. Oh, man. Yeah. Okay, that's what it is. That's working all day tired. That also sounds like back floating tired. <laughs> You're just in a pool back floating. <laughs> got my floaties on. Oh, man, I got this headset in that doesn't get water in it. Corona comes in a can now. <laughs> life, life is hey, okay. Oh, yeah. How about... Bitches running around dickless. Okay, well, I, I like mean, it. that's what bitches tend to do. Yeah, right. little love. Not, not, bitch, not bitches, bitches, but bitches, bitches, bitches. Got you. Brad. Yeah, yeah. Got no, Brad, Brad type bitches. Yeah, the Brad bitches. Yeah. You know, it's great. Someone just hung up on the phone, like you took their exact one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this guy's coming through in heat. Shane, thanks for the call, buddy. How we going, Shane? Sleep uh, tight. Sandy in Tejas. Hello, how you doing? Hey, Good. Sandy, how are you? I'm fine. This is my third time calling. I think you guys are wonderful. You guys amuse me to no end, and I'm well over 40, so fuck Brad. Yeah, Beautiful. thanks, Sandy. Fuck Brad. What's your acronym? I, uh, basic retard asshole douche. Ooh! Love it. Sandy going to the bone on that one. I love basic. Basic's great too. because, yeah, that's like that, uh, there's a little... It's modern. It's a modern sting. Yeah, very. Good job. Yeah. Sandy, you nailed it. Sandy, didn't it? Brad, Brad's a basic bitch. She, not only is she getting a hat trick of phone calls in, but she's also <laughs> knocking the dick off an acronym. Good job, Sandy. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye. You Thank have a good, you, Sandy. You have a good week. She's sweet. You too, dude. Oh, yeah. this I love Sandy. Sandy's Sandy. sweet. It's the Hydra, but a good Hydra. Yeah, absolutely. Uh -uh. Mm. Burping. Bill, Illinois. Hey, listen to you gentlemen all the time. Oh, no, Bill. Is that, Is that you, Merck? Is that you? Is that you, Merck? Bill, Bill you know, call right back. Hold on. No, no, Bill, call back. We're going to put you through. You know who wouldn't have done that, Andy? Hugo. Yeah, Hugo. Hugo. You know what Hugo would have done? Probably got a story out of him. <laughs> Probably bonded with him. But you know what you did, Merkface Andy? Just like you did all those innocent civilians when you were overseas murdering them in your mercenary group? What? You hung up on them. I know. You couldn't feel emotions then because you had to do what you had to do, but you're home now, man. Yeah, that's, it. yeah. Well, the whole reason you're I had okay, a flashback. Yeah, well, you made money off Something the death of innocence. So you find Bill and you bring him back because that motherfucker sounded jovial and nice and Jay and I... We're in a real bad place right now because of Brad. So you and your swinging dick friends can continue to napalm this fucking hut we're in. Yeah. Or we can actually act like humans. So I'm sorry about that. Campers. It's your choice. Sorry, Bill. <laughs> it's campers. And uh, Andy, you know, I apologize to you off air. I don't mean to come down on you so hard. Bill, when you call, you say whatever you have to say. Hey. I'll put you right through, buddy. JJ, DC. JJ in DC says he's got the, he's got the banger. The who banger? Why? Who are we banging? Because if we're banging somebody, I want to know first. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, maybe me. Just aisle <laughs> back, <laughs> back hole open. Uh, 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 all right, all right. Let's let you know what. Uh, Brad has done us a favor here. He has. He really, he really has. Absolutely, and we can also promise you that Wednesday show will not be about Brad. Oh well, I mean, let's 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 think about this for a second. Because, uh, I don't know if it was you, Soda, or you, Ted, that, that that started it, but you're on the right track. The B is definitely bonfire, but it right. can go one of two ways here. Mm -hmm. Let's turn this into like a a test, so to speak. A what? Brad, a test. Okay. Let, here it goes. Either Brad stands for bonfire colon reviewed 
and denied. Okay. Or bonfire, um, rejected and denied. Uh, so anytime one of these douchebags calls in, if you know it's one of them, yeah. they can go, oh, I want to talk, you know, I want to talk, it's one of these guys, and you sit there and you can say, well, we've reviewed you, and no. Oh, I like Not that. Yet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's how we give down our dissenting opinion. No. Absolutely. After the review of the board, it's understood that you are a Brad. JJ, do you do voiceover work? And what an amazing voice this guy yeah. has. Uh, no, I don't, but, uh, you know. But I bet you're awesome at phone sex. The dominant. I bet you're no. the dominant in phone sex. <laughs> I have it out, and I'm touching it to the phone. You're listening to JJ jack his shaft. <laughs> <laughs> right now, I'm working a furious pace as my balls jump up and then dangle down. If you're par- if you'll pardon me, I need to spit in my palm. Oh, you're a nasty slut. You're gonna get it. You're gonna get it so do we- hard. Jacob, do we have both of those written down? If you don't, I'm going to burn your feet, Jacob. JJ, those are awesome, buddy. JJ, you have a hey, you know, fantastic I, I, voice. I'm way, I'm way too mature because you're, you're all a bunch of juvenile assholes. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. You have fun. I, have a, I swear to God, I have a 90-mile drive one way every single day. So 100, 180 miles around, round trip and Monday and Wednesday. Just a little bit more juvenile. You always have, always, every show, you always have w- at least one moment where I piss my fucking pants <laughs> yeah. because I'm laughing my ass off. I'll tell you what the, what one in particular was, was when you uh, were busting <laughs> on Tom Hanks' kid yeah. and, and you were talking about him vaping. I had my sister-in-law in the car. I swear to God, I drove off the road. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's pants. dead. <laughs> the funeral service was two weeks ago, and I tried explaining it was about Chet Hayes. <laughs> JJ, thanks for calling him, man. Thanks for listening. All right, guys. And, uh, Hope to keep you laughing, buddy. Get home safe. And thank you for your the hilarious image of you doing voiceover for phone sex. We got a few more a few more acronyms we'll take here. Keith Keith in New York. Yo, what's up guys? Love you. Thank you. Love you too. I got three and they they operate on three different levels. Oh Oh, man, I like uh, hold on, I'm sorry to interrupt, Keith, but I like that the callers are coming up with layered acronyms. Yeah, it's almost like do we call the Brad somebody because how they feel about us? Or are we just going a straight on, like, you know, calling them an asshole? And this really is opening up, a like, almost a philosophical discussion on what is a Brad? Is a Brad <laughs> here to take away from us or to add to us? We don't know. That's the enigma that is Brad. Being a Brad. Being a Brad. Living your life as a Brad. Messing up Merc Face Andy on a call. Got him. Oh, don't you, don't you kiss up now. Now he's going to have to wait a little bit because we're on the phone with Keith. Who's Keith. got multiple acronyms? Please, just please yeah, tell and us. A fi- and a five-minute commute to work. So you yeah, suck my <laughs> dick. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> ah, Keith, I want to high five you on that one. Hey, That's guess what? Guess what? I drive two and a half miles. You <laughs> fucking peasants. <laughs> what a dick. <laughs> you middle of the country long haulers. Yeah, that's why you live in God knows who gives a fuck. <laughs> Keith, Keith just did the most New Yorker yeah. thing possible, <laughs> which is like, yeah, it's better in New York. <laughs> I laugh, I laugh. I laugh hard at least twice on my way from home to work. <laughs> that's good. That's good. That's good. Two hard laughs in five minutes, dude. I'm not gonna that. lie. That's like, yeah. If that's hourly, we are fucking crushing. All right, you, you guys want these? I don't want to take up a lot. Please, please, yeah, yeah. Okay, blows, rhinos, and donkeys. Love it. Blows, rhinos, and donkeys. All right. Okay, let that sink in. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Yeah, no. I was, I was letting it roll around in my mouth like I'm testing a <laughs> bottle of wine. Oh, no, it's got a little bit of venom on the end. Ooh, mm. it. It's got a fuller feel. Uh, bitch reaches around dudes. Okay, mm-hmm. that bitch. This one's the deep one. We're gonna need Dan's expertise on this. Okay. Brad regrets Ashley's death. Oh. Good answer. I like the way you think. I'm going to be watching you. <laughs> um, Those are good. Yeah, I mean, the one, the last one's so very, I like it because it's, so spe- it's so specific to the phone call. Do you think Brad really had a girl named Ashley who passed away? I mean, if that is the case, I will send her family an entire fucking uh, flower shop full I'll of I'll send an edible arrangement. That's the best you're getting out of me. I will. I mean, they, honestly, God, the family should be pretty impressed that we pull that out of our asses. Like I that. will That's bury true. Ashley in a pet cemetery. <laughs>
Hey, great grandma, I'm sorry. Here's a fucking cup of melon balls. Make do. <laughs> Make do. Meanwhile, I'm behind her. I'm willing to use the dark arts <laughs> to bring your Ashley back. Look, this is a long shot, but if we hold hands around this table, I'm pretty sure I can get Ashley back. I got a Haitian guy that's got zombieism in his family. <laughs> okay. But if you want to go dig up a very new body, yeah, I can probably put Ashley so into that book. I have read Mary Shelley's Frankenstein <laughs> four times. <laughs> Here's what you don't know. Before we put Ashley in the ground, Frankenstein, I took her brain. I took it. I have it in a jar. <laughs> Ashley still lives. Her thoughts in this jar. <laughs> <laughs> I can change the past. I Keith, to... thank you so much for calling. You're a good dude. Yo. Thank Get home. Hey, I'm almost home. I'm almost home. Good, 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 good. Did we get our two? Hey. Did we get our two laughs in? Yeah. Look, I'm waving. I'm waving at my wife from the driveway. You know what I'm not doing? On some godless interstate in the middle of this fucking country. Hey, yeah, I'm gonna be. Uh, I gotta have my feet kicked up in five minutes watching an island this game. Those cocksuckers down in North Carolina have fun driving through pure forest for 17 hours. Oh, great news! Bill from Illinois is back. back. We got the Bill, and he's back. Bill, what's your status? Just a simple fucking boy from Illinois. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, I got a tr I, my buddy Dave Jr. listens on a continual basis as well as myself. You gentlemen are most excellent. Right, is his name triple. is his name Big Junior? Dave Junior. Oh, Dave Jr. Yeah. Dave Jr. Oh, I thought he said Big Junior. That's a great fucker. name. Nice. Thank you guys. Anyhow, he I got a triple uh uh acronym. Uh, triple Alliterative acronym. Ooh, wow. Ooh, doggies. Uh, syphilitic sack of shit. Okay. That's, but that's not, um. That does, boy, wait. Well, there's, there's more to it, okay. which I picked up in the pool hall as a young boy from Illinois. It's a syphilitic sack of shit, gonorrhea eaten motherfucker. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty good one for a stranger. We're looking for specifics. Oh, yeah. Added. Towards Triple bread. Triple F, athletic sack of shit. No, no, yeah, no, no, fantastic alliteration. We're looking for an acronym for Brad, not just any old acronym. Oh, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bad Brad. Okay, that's all I got, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for calling back, Bill, Thanks for calling, buddy. Uh, how okay, are we going? Adios. Take care. Dude, that, that was, was great. great. You know what that was like? That was like your friend's dad trying to get in the conversation you guys are having. <laughs> we were like, oh, yeah, man, she's thick. He was like, you want to know what's thick? Cement mix. You ever, uh, <laughs> I dropped my keys in that. Yeah, that's not what. You don't want to get that on your jeans. Yeah, we're, uh, Mr. Hanson, we're not talking about that right now. <laughs> ah, well, I thought you guys were talking about thick stuff. I worked, you in, know? <laughs> I worked in concrete for 15 years. You know what's expensive? Clean this pool. <laughs> what? Huh? what? <laughs> but it was still so lovely. <laughs> ben, Alabama. Hey, man, what's going on? Hey, Ben. Hey, big fan of you guys. Uh, for one thing, Huey Lewis and Squatty Potties both rock. Thank you. It's like you yes, get sir. me. You understand Don't me. Don't forget the Alabama Caesar salad also oh, yeah, coming big out of Alabama. Yes, yeah. Sir. In more ways than one, I'm six foot six, three hundred pounds. So I'm with you, Jay. Oh yeah, Hell dude, yes. you're getting your, you're getting your tee off, you're getting your tf and on, and your butt eight. <laughs> Straight yes, Alabama. Sir, that is correct. Alabama hey, season three, salad. Yes, I remember that. That was hilarious as hell. But I got three Brad acronyms for you. Bring them fire. All right, first one is my nerdy side. Biological reject, antichrist, devil child. Oh. Whoa. Oh, you know what I like about it? It was scientific and religious. You know what I like about it? Yes, it's also my mock Christian metal band. That is. In fact, you guys are going to be opening up for New Moose Knuckle on <laughs> Saturday at the VFW in Brooklyn. <laughs> All right. Uh, second one is a little more uh, avant-garde. Uh, <laughs> this is my artsy one. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Hold on. This is my uh, short black and white French film acronym. <laughs> I want you guys to imagine this in a coffee house. Or Think a... Fellini. Yeah. Are you familiar Wait. with <laughs> Amalie? Uh, all right. What is the, uh, what's the acronym? Yes. Bleeding red anal damage. Yeah. Nice red sock. To the point. Love it. Get it. 
And then the, the third and final is actually backwards. Don't allow reproducing brads. That's a darp. Oh. And if you say it backwards three times, it's a darp. Show up. It's a darb. Darb. Uh, yeah, darb. You're being a real darb. You're being a real darb about this. Hey, can you get in the car? You're being a real darb right now. Ben, love it. Thank what? you. Shut up, you fucking darb. Yeah, <laughs> you're a darb. <laughs> Don't you call me a darb? <laughs> you guys are a bunch of darb. It's yeah. darb hanging up back there. I need you guys to take the lights down on this next acronym. Uh, I was in a dark place when I wrote this one. <laughs> darb. <laughs> darb is a word that even if you don't know what it means, sounds like you're being insulted. Hey, you darb. I'm not going to that party with a bunch of darbs hanging out. Oh, yeah. What the fuck's that supposed to You met be? his cousin? Fucking dude's a darb. I picture darbs where, like... Like light, like violet and fuchsia and salmon colored collar shirts. Huh? Oh, I just right. picture that. That's what I a picture. Darb. When I hear a darb, I picture the yeah. insult has something to do with that. Yeah, darbs like, uh, you ever sailed? You've never sailed? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've never sailed. Oh, uh, dude, you should make. Do you know what a darb is? A darb is a guy before the show that comes up to you and goes, don't make fun of my buddy. <laughs> you should. <laughs> Shut up, you darb. Uh, we'll take one more acronym here before the last. Break. Last Renee. acronym. Renee from Texas. Hey, what's up, you guys? I know Renee. You know, what, you know, I know Renee has called before. He's got gambit voice. because every time I think it's going to be a girl, and then I go, no, no, it's going to be, the, it's going to be Renee, the guy. And then Texas. I hear his French slash Texas kind of twang thing, <laughs> and it reminds me of Gambit from the X Men. His Frexus, yeah, his Frexus twang. Yeah, I want to uh, almost is John Claude Van Damme. You, of all people, should know I would never in my life <laughs> wear black silk underwear. <laughs> that never does it make me laugh a lot. <laughs> uh, what's up, Renee? Bonjour. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the show, guys. I, mean, I love listening to it while I drive every goddamn day across this country. Well, Thank there's you so much. There's Renee. a guy in New York that says you can suck his dick. <laughs> <laughs> well, Keith in New York says you can fucking lick his butt because he drives five minutes a day. <laughs> I'll get my Amazon delivered air mail, thank you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the the acronym I had was uh bitch really admires dick. Okay. It's true. Okay. I spent true in that. Yeah. I definitely Good think one. he's got dick fever. <laughs> Guy's totally hot for cock if I'm guessing. <laughs> By the sound of his tone and his alliteration, he's hot for cock. Renee, keep listening, call whenever you want, buddy. We love you. Keep heating up those cards and throwing them at people, Gambit. That's that's two, will that's, do, guys. Take care. Take care. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back. It's the bonfire. Intergalactic spaceships, comic books, supervillains, fire-breathing dragons. If you're looking for the perfect gift for your favorite geek or just want to treat yourself to something fun and exciting, every month go to LootCrate.com. Loot Crate is the ultimate monthly subscription service for geeks, gamers, and pop culture fanatics. Almost didn't make it out of that Where sentence. Where are they? <laughs> you heard me tumble on that one. Pop. Culture. Culture. Fanatics. Yeah, dude. PCFs. <laughs> it's classic PCFs. <laughs> Sign up today, and for less than $20 a month, Loot Crate sends you a mystery crate filled with hand-picked apparel, collectibles, and gear from all your favorite pop culture brands like Marvel, The Walking Dead, Star Wars, Game of Thrones, and more. Each month, each month's crate, I say I gotta restart it. It's it a felt bar- like I was just like, It's a know. bargain. Dude, it's pretty cool. Because and, we saw some of the stuff today. And even. that's what it is. This pretty neat. Because this month's theme is... Uh, well, last month's theme was time travel because of Back to the Future. And so we just looked at the time thing. There was an awesome shirt that Christine got. There was a uh, hoverboard, uh, hoverboard, like, yeah, like, you know, display collectible. I got a spork from Doctor Who that I'm going to eat my cereal with. It's pretty neat. It is. It is pretty neat. <laughs> Doctor Who's spork was pretty. one of the most badass things. And, actually, and the t shirt was pretty great. Yeah. And then next month, the theme, or this coming up month, is combat. So it explores all the fun, fantastical fighters <laughs> competing. Exaggerated arenas. Why just would open you... the box and a fuck fist just comes away <laughs> in the face. You catch an, you get an assault charge in each box. <laughs> you get exclusive items from Blizzard, Fallout 4, Capcom, and the Hunger Games. Go to lootcrate.com slash bonfire now to sign up for a limited time. And if you use the promo code bonfire at checkout, you're going to save $3 off any new subscription. So go to lootcrate.com slash bonfire now. That's lootcrate.com slash bonfire. And now, back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. Ah, Eagles of Death Metal, Monday. That's uh, Skin Tight Boogie off their brand new album, Zipper Down, which is fucking awesome. Zipper Down. It's the bonfire, Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. I'm Dan Soder. That's Big J Okerson. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Still here. Mm-hmm. 
We had so many acronyms. So many campers teaming up to bash Brad. That was fun. The war of campers versus Brad's. We merely are those trying to lead you. It'll be revisited, I'm sure, but let's, 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 we're going to leave it alone now. Now, the reason Brad came into our lives is because he had a story about a chick. Yes, he said he caught a girl masturbating. But he, okay. So, but uh, what, what do you want to do? Well, we're gonna go. We promised James. We talked to James. When we, when okay, we came back. Okay. Um, You're a man of your word. I respect I'm a man that, of my Jay. word. It means something to me. So we have James in San Diego. What's up, James? Hey, how you guys doing? Good. How you doing? Hey. Uh, so yeah, briny ratchet anal diver. That's, Ooh. that's a good one. Wow, briny? Yeah, James is coming with a learned thing. Where'd you go to UC Santa? A little salty, a little salty. Yeah, I like yeah. briny. That's good. Dude, that I really... can tell you this right now, James, you do well for yourself, don't you? I'm uh, not in a bad place. But, uh... See, that's, yeah, dude, that's a, <laughs> I mean, that that's a rich great. man's response. <laughs> brain, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say my vacations <laughs> suck, but yeah, yeah I've like never I, rode I'm a bus with my Nord. Off all day, yeah. you know. Not... Um, waking up watching the sun in uh, approach a hill in La Jolla hasn't been too stressful. But yes, <laughs> I guess you could say I do. But well. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fresh, fresh fruit every morning, uh, acquired by my personal chef. Yes, I, you, one could say I'm doing quite well. James, we're kidding, and I want to hear your story because this exact situation worked out so bad for us with Brad. Yeah. Was he called with a great oh, yeah, story, he, and then we did his voice for two minutes, and then he turned. We were walking down Brad territory. <laughs> he, uh, he stole the show. But, uh, yeah, I'm way, way back yonder, I was in the Coast Guard, and we're out in San Juan, Puerto Rico, uh, old San Juan, and there's this little whorehouse that's uh, – called lucky sevens and uh i had no clue i had no clue what this place was and my boys and i would go out get blacked out playing the slots at uh senior frogs and all these other places yeah and and i come to and they've got arms you know my arms over their shoulders and we're walking into this joint and these three chicks walk up and they grab us by the balls and i'm like man these girls really like us you know i had no idea (laughs) that it it was a whorehouse you know (laughs) wow these girls are aggressive dude this was easy, you know? And uh, so I'm browning out, you know? Yeah. I'm not really coherent. And there's, like, this quick argument with this fat lady. I get shoved into this, like, blue-lit, like, dim room. And this uh, Hispanic chick is, you know, digging in my pockets, asking me how much money I have. And this is the closest I've ever been to sleeping with a prostitute. And thank God I had just won the jackpot at the slots. I pulled out, like... It would have been funny. She's like... I just imagine her being like, how are you How are you doing in life? How are you doing in life? He's like, not bad. I'm actually not bad. He's so drunk. It's the same thing you said to us. I'm in a good place. I'm not I'm in a good place. She, yeah, give me all your money. How much money do you have? I'm, I'm not in a bad place. Come on. If I'm going to be honest with you, the slots were pretty nice to me. Well, things have been better here. <laughs> so what happens? She's digging through your pockets. And I just made it rain quarters, and she spent 30 minutes, like, butt naked, just picking up quarters, yelling at me, like, you drunk fucking idiot. And, and then like, she's oh. like, but seriously, that's a lot of quarters. I would get angrier, but there seems to be a lot of silver at my feet. Yeah, <laughs> good stuff. So Wait I, th- I love you guys, man. Uh, dude, you thanks for calling in. Easy. Thanks, buddy. Right, dude, that completely reminds me of, I went to school at the University of Arizona, and you'd go down to Nogales on, when you were a freshman, because you could drink. At 18 in Mexico. Mm-hmm. Ocalis is in Mexico. And so we go my freshman year. We're down there. And my buddy, there's a Greyhound station that you take back up to Tucson. Late at night, after everyone's drinking. And you come back over the border. We're waiting in the Greyhound station. And my buddy tries to ask the lady at the Greyhound this question. And this frat guy gets, he gets into some shit with this frat guy. Mm-hmm. We end up almost fighting, like, all these frat guys. And they're like, hey... You guys, us, we weren't allowed on the last bus to Tucson. <laughs> so like, this is the last bus. The next bus doesn't come till 645. And it's like 430. And we're like, so what the fuck are we going to do for two hours? The guy's like, I don't know. And one of my buddies is like, just go find, there's got to be an after hours bar somewhere in Nogales, Mexico. It has to be. He's like, let's go. Let's go back over <laughs> the border. Solid logic. Dude. Trust me, flash enough American money, let them know that we're not dangerous. They'll definitely... We're lost. <laughs> yeah. No one knows where we are. Let them know that cell phone technology is years away from being <laughs> traceable. Uh, no one's looking for me. I mean, really, we should do this. So we go back over, and we're just... We're hammered. 
And so we're just asking the people in the guys like, hey, cerveza? Do you know where we can get a cerveza? And this guy's like, yeah, come here. Follow me to this hidden doorway. Dude, I'm not joking. We walk through this alley. And this is, it's literally how horror movies start. Yeah. I'm not kidding. Yeah, no. Where you get Kurt, are you in the pregnant with the devil? Yeah. It's the diablo. It's in your belly. Now you are the father for the devil. <laughs> you will carry to turn. You bring into the world the devil. Don't you even try to not carry to turn. No. Not yet. Uh, Dan, you have to get an abortion. No. No, no, I bring him into the world <laughs> in the way I want to. Uh, it will be natural birth <laughs> in a bathtub with a wet nurse. <laughs> Ooh, I know Epidural is the easy way out, but, but that it, is for a lady boy. I want him to pass through my birth canal <laughs> to experience the love. And no, don't cut the umbilical cord. Save that for his dad. <laughs> I'm going to smother him with love and affection. I want to hold him. I can't wait to take his picture before he goes to break it. I know I fall apart, but oh, what about uh, the little clay model of his tiny hand? <laughs> I will look at my husband and say, oh my God, this means we're getting older now. Oh, look at him. He has your eyes. <laughs> Yes, your eyes. Um, oh, we, how many compleaños have gone by? <laughs> oh, your mother is an abuela. <laughs> <laughs> Peacefully raising the devil. <laughs> we arise. We buy a farm in Chihuahua. This segment has been stoned. Uh, but no, but uh, what happened was <laughs> the guy. We walked through a door, and I order a beer and a shot of tequila. And it's $15. And no. I was like, what the fuck? So you know you're already getting hosed. And then you look around, all these truckers are sitting there with girls on their laps. And my buddy's like, ah, dude, we're in a whorehouse. I was going to say, I think you're saying the girls turn into vampires. Yeah. <laughs> Just till dawn. <laughs> <laughs> we rob a bank. I got a sick-ass <laughs> tattoo coming up my neck. Dan, are you just telling me the story of Just Till Dawn? Do you think the guy from Stained got his tattoo before the movie or the movie before the guy from Stained? I'll tell you what will make me like Stained more. Mm -hmm. is if he got it because of the movie. Really? If he was like, that's a badass, man. If he got it for the movie, that's why I think it's more badass. Yeah, that's why he's so far away. Because <laughs> he can't. We're just making stain jokes. Welcome back to 1999. Hey, it's been a while. Um, I mean, we were just talking about Nogales. That went on way too long. But I feel like I kind of want to talk to Patrick in Arizona. Go for it. Hi, Patrick. Hey, this is uh, Hector. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, Hector. Do you have a Nogales story? <laughs> hey, dude, I, I grew up in Nogales, and I lived there what? for years. What? Hey, can you, hey, can you turn, down, turn down your radio? Yeah, sorry about that. Oh, that's all right, dude. Um, you grew up, did you grow up on the Mexican side or the American side? <laughs> yeah, the American side. That's great. What was that like, just growing up? I mean, dude, literally half the town is, the uh, United States, half the town is Mexico. But you don't have to cross yeah. border. No, you do. There's like a full on border. In the middle of the town. Yeah. Uh, really? Yeah, actually, uh, there's this little place called the Rio Rico, which is just north of that. And uh, we'd go down there all the time. Uh, me and my buddies, uh, you know, going through uh, college and stuff. Yeah, U of A. <laughs> I have a bunch of buddies who went to U of A. We're all U of A fans over here. And uh, there's this one time, my, me and my brother and a bunch of my buddies go down there. And these guys are just uh, looking for, you know, no, no, you know, not a good time going up against us. And oh. they started jumping one of my friends. Jesus. And my buddy, this, he sees this guy running right towards him. And he, like, just decks this guy, right? Floors him, cracks his, uh, his ocular, you know, yeah. right, right around his eye. Yeah, he broke his eye, yeah, he broke his eye bone. Yeah. And uh, he looks on the ground, and it's a federality. <gasps> Jesus. And these guys, he gets swarmed by yeah. fucking federales. Oh, no. So <laughs> so he just looks around and he puts his hands up because he knew that he was either going to get shot or killed by these guys. You so just... meanwhile, me and my buddies are in the street. We're getting fist fights and we all start to flee. And uh, the guy who, one of my buddies who started this whole thing, Got in a truck and left. Went into America and that was it. Wait, so, so he left you in Mexico after you just punched a federale? Oh yeah, yeah. 
Oh, so, that is a t- that's a fucking. How the fuck did you get out of that? Yeah. He's like, I, I, I didn't. I'm calling you from a Mexican prison. <laughs> uh, I received 30 years. Please tell my family I love them. It's <laughs> been terrible here. This is the first call. What's going on? Who's president? <laughs> all they wanted was 75 bucks and a box of chiclets. That's all they wanted. So. Seriously? <laughs> no, I'm joking. Oh, that would have been hilarious. Like, <laughs> How racist wait. was that to believe him? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, you <laughs> gave him four oh, cobs of corn oh. and a high five. Oh, I knew there. I was going to give them blankets with a sickness. <laughs> Polio blankets. <laughs> Oh, that's so anyway, fucking... my, my buddy gets taken into uh, the jail down there, and he says it was just the worst ass-kicking he's ever got, that they tied him up, or they had handcuffed him to this wall. Oh, Those Mexicans are born boxers, them. too. Yeah, that's oh, what. Well, yeah. there's a whole style of boxing named after the Mexican style, which is the kind where you just keep advancing and punching at people. I would hope the federales that beat me up were luchadors. Yeah, <laughs> High doing, flyers. You're just getting belly splashed. <laughs> <laughs> That was it. I had to take three moon salts when I was locked. <laughs> well, I thought the beating was over, but then he did something where he grabbed on the luggage rack of his car and did some sort of an inside out flip, and his, his feet came right back at me. I thought he was running away from me, but he really springboarded <laughs> off the wall. <laughs> they landed a belly splash. Did you draw him? I, I can't. I can't. It's going to be a goddamn superhero. <laughs> He had a mask and then a cape. Uh, you get a sketch artist, but it's good looking like I'm t- describing a comic book. I mean, basically, you're going to arrest Jack Black for not- <laughs> Nacho Libre. Yeah. How do he look? I don't know. Short, Mexican, wearing a mask. Like he could do backflips pretty easy. <laughs> like maybe even off a middle rope. What do he look like? Can you draw a picture of a tornado of teeth and knuckles? <laughs> yeah. Uh, pa- uh, so, Hector, wait, so he just got his ass kicked? And then they let him oh, go? Oh, he got his ass kicked. No, they didn't let him go. They kept him in there for about a week. And wow. And they were, were going to send him to the prison, but you don't want to go to prison down there. Yeah. I mean, when he came out, his parents ended up having to go down, bailing him out. I think they ended up spending about, I don't know, $1,500. It was mm. nothing that, nice. they, that they gave them. And they were, they were going to actually send him to prison for assault on a federal uh, did he say? Did he say what food they give you in Mexican prison? Is it just like... Tacos no, and burritos. He never, <laughs> well, he never made it to the prison. He said, you know, he said that it was just a bunch of shit that he didn't really. He couldn't even describe what he was eating. It was just was he ass kicking wh- after ass kicking. Hector, was he a white he dude? No, he wasn't. Okay. Yeah, no, we were all like Mexicans. We're all we're all like native there. So yeah, we all yeah, yeah. Like, Jesus. The whole thing. And they were just gonna so. fucking drag him off the prison and fuck him up for. I mean, dude, that's. Oh, yeah, that's, it's hard to get your ass out of prison. $1,500, it's like, like 40 bazillion pesos. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a whole lot of cocaine down there. Yeah, that's a, that's a truck full of pesos. <laughs> Fucking, uh, remember Dog the Bounty Hunter? Yeah, Went bro. To, like Mexican prison for a little bit? That's his story. No, like, no, 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 no. They have, like, that happened to him, like, not long ago. Like, he was there for a little bit. Hey, you want to bing this up, Jacob? Oh, b- please, bing it. It's great. He's there. He, on bing. He's making his phone calls home and everything. It's hilarious. Hey, what's up, brother? Sorry, I got caught in a... It's me, dog. I'm down here with Jesus. <laughs> trying Random. to survive. Where are we? Bring me my Jesus and my Oakleys and, and my hair mousse. And my long earring for only one ear. <laughs> and my armband with topaz in it. <laughs> Bring me my elephantitis of the tits wife. And my, <laughs> and my Marlboro Ultralight 1000s. <laughs> Hector, thanks for calling in, dude. Bring me all of my shaved head ponytailed sons i need all hey guys, of them. i appreciate you guys man you guys are great i listen to you guys all the time thanks dude. thank you man no thanks for listening buddy great story dude yeah, yeah dude that's, thank you, man. that's a that could have had a way scarier ending you know someone's about to come in here and, and hit cleanup where brad failed and that is colton oh dude i'm about from our sh- kansas what's up Colton, what's up, dude? What's going on? Hey, Colton. Sorry, I wasn't energetic at the beginning of your phone call. I just had to sneak out a fart without. Did you my really? Pants. I mean, yeah, that would happen. I kind of cracked one. But you know, it's going all around shit that air, and then no, you... dude, it's not. It's I just had to relieve pressure. I couldn't do another fifteen minutes of radio. This pressure. Honest, you farted so many times in front of my girlfriend, and I weirdly respect you more for it. Thank you. I feel Weird. like Chris. I mean, especially Bonnaroo. I was just cracking ass. No, not giving a fuck. You rip like that in front of your chick, too, right? Yeah. yeah. That's like yeah. part of the territory. You, you date the old sode man. You right. get bubble guts. Buddy, you're not get... <laughs> you're deal with it. Colton, I'm sorry. Um, uh, I was going to say, it blocks thoughts, man. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does, right? It blocks thoughts. Yeah, I'm, trying to be, yeah. I'm trying to be my best for you guys, the campers, and for you, Jay. Thank you. This is a dance of love. 
<laughs> like the tango. <laughs> like the lombada for me. <laughs> Colton, so yes. um, when Brad called in, he had a story that got us really excited, and it wasn't a story. It was all a lark in order for us to feel stupid while he yelled at us. But you have a real story. Yes. I was like, uh, I've been trying to call in, but that fucker blocked the airways. Yeah, so. dude, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm an over-the-road truck driver, and um, I was working down in Texas for a while at a big trucking company, and I became a trainer. And um, I was I'm prior military, so they um, certified me to train females. Okay. So I'm on the truck driving along, and I've had this chicken, you know, like for like two weeks in the truck. So you guys are it's just truck. you and her, it's just you and her in the truck for two weeks. Yeah, it's just me and her in the truck for like two weeks. Well, it's, it's like very... four weeks. I had to spend two weeks after after this. That so. could be a Cinemax series. Oh, it's it's. Uh, no. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. She's probably had Jerome bed his no, legs. Well, I mean, I mean, if you get a good, you know, if you get a hot chick, guy, right, but not her. Yeah. But anyway, um, so I let her drive. I'm in the back. I'm trying to sleep because it's a team drive thing. So I'm trying, I'm in the back trying to sleep, and I notice the truck fucking swerving all over the road. So I jump up, and I unzip the curtain, and I op- you know, open up the curtain, and there she is in the driver's seat driving on the road, knuckles deep. Yes. Just going to town. I'm like, oh, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? She's like, 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 <laughs> morning. <laughs> Thought I'd wake you up in the most erotic way possible by me knuckle-fucking myself. And she was just awful looking, I'm assuming, Colton, yeah? Yeah, uh, it was it was it was horrible. I had to spend another two weeks in the truck with her. Oh, dude. Oh. <laughs> oh, dude. It was it was awkward. I just imagine I, I, <laughs> Colton. I just imagine you with like the one eye opening, like and you just hear like, <laughs> it's like I need a shave. Want to feel? <laughs> oh man, it's like fucking rubbing your hand against a porcupine down there. Hey, sleeping oh, pants. <laughs> Hey, what's up, Colton? I was just up here sanding my palms with my beef. Yeah. What's up, sleepy face? I'm up here thinking about Michael Buble <laughs> busting off ropes into my hand. Wow, man. All night for six hours. Just... Oh, dude, what, did is... she say anything when you called her? No, she's like, I mean, she just, like, she pulled her hand out and just started driving again. I'm like, I mean, her pants are down to her ankles. I'm like, dude, how the fuck are you even driving? Right. That's fucking yeah. so I imagine her doing that. I thought there was, was going to be a reach down. I imagine her doing that. The zipper. <laughs> like, after she pulls out, she's like, and she's like, <laughs> and just shakes her hand. She shakes her hand. Yeah. She's all, hey, morning. Oh, dude. Ah, that, let me give you the knuckles on this one. That's almost worse. She's like, morning. Did you, did you even have to <laughs> sort of, up. did you even have to sort of fucking, uh, they, for your own interest, did you have to smell the steering wheel the next day? <laughs> Lysol. I Lysol everything when she got out. So. Uh, just, she she walked right in front of her while you were shaking your head at her, just shaking your head mm-hmm. and Lysoling the steering wheel. Wearing one of those surgeon masks that oh. Asian people wear in Queens. I'm getting your muff crud off this. What do you mean? And what am I doing? Yeah, what, I can't grab the steering wheel. It's like you ate a pizza <laughs> and then held onto this thing. <laughs> It's sticky now, yeah. Oh, Colton, Colton, you're a good man who's witnessed some gross things. Thanks for calling, oh. in, buddy. Yeah, thank you, dude. That's yeah, hilarious. Buddy. You're just asleep. You just feel the jerk of the cab. You're like, what is that? I mean, what? Let's maybe this will be a hotter story here. We got Stephen in California. Hey, Stephen. Hey, what's up, gentlemen? Hey, Stephen. How are you? Pretty good, pretty good. I've actually been sitting behind a fucking Walmart in Santa Clarita because I can't go home because I have to go under bridges, and it cuts out my fucking cell phone signal. Oh, dude, well, thanks for waiting. Thanks for waiting to go home. Absolutely, absolutely. And my lady's there, so it's a double whammy. There you go. Get a little more of you time. Yeah. (laughs) That's what love is. But, so, uh, you know, being a nerd, I was in marching band. All four years in high school. Let me stop you right there, and, Steven. I don't. I, I don't mean to. I, I don't mean to cut you off real quick. But people always say that they're always like, "I was a nerd because I was in marching band." Here's the thing about marching band: those people fuck like crazy. It's very intramural fucking, oh, but they no. fuck like crazy. And also, depending where you go, and I believe California be a place much like the South, where the marching band sometimes are the fucking people are the shit. Yeah. Dude, like you're I, in- know, I feel you, man. I fucked, I fucked the drum major and the other one, too. So I, I know it's unique, but this, this one particular chick, she would play the clarinet, and the only way that I could describe her accurately is aggressively ugly. Okay. All right. Oh, that's like, uh, the, you know what? That job, that look tends to go with women who run tow yards. Right? Exactly. <laughs> They're like aggressively ugly. 
And I'm pretty sure she is. But I went, uh, you know, I was I was a section leader my senior year, so right. I had to go in, and some of the younger kids didn't know how to clean out their shit, so I would go in and clean it for them. Well, I went in uh, to the band room. It was, like, about an hour before school actually started, and I walk in, and this chick is, like, like three finger, like, freaking palm deep. And, like, she's, like, sees me, and she just, like, she just, like, like it's kind of like a, like a shriek. It's kind of like, eh. And then she fucking grabs the music stand and stands up and tries to cover herself with it. And I was like, yeah, no, 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 no. Don't, don't even worry about it. And, and then, like, I left. But it sucked because I waited outside for, like, ten minutes waiting for her to leave. Yeah. She didn't. So I still had to go back in there and, you know, do my job. Oh, and it smelled like <laughs> solo sex. And she saw you. Yeah. Oh yeah, no. She saw. I I was I was already in. I had dropped my backpack. Like I was I was committed. <laughs> you did. Like, oh shit. Yeah, you did the uh, "Honey, I'm home" thing. Where you're like, "Baby, what's going on?" And she's like, oh. <laughs> "Man, I, I really have not done much." High risk masturbation. In my Me life. neither. I jerked off when I was a janitor at this hair salon. I jerked <laughs> off in the break room because they had a TV with a, a tape player, and I just bought a porn, a VHS porn. What are you looking at me like that for? What the, no one was there. The whole place is shut down. Or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the janitor. I'm the only person there. You, are you the only person there? Yeah. I had a security code. And I could uh, that. I would do in a heartbeat. Yeah, that's not high risk. Oh, yeah, you're right. But, I mean, that's, like, the most high-risk thing that my simple ass has done. I mean high-risk, like, I get driving or <laughs> fucking, like, you know, exactly. Like An hour school before school? school? Where yeah. I've never jerked off in school. Me in, 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 in hindsight, if I had, yeah, if, if the cell phones existed now, <laughs> I, I would jerk off in school. Oh, Absolutely. If I would have had to drop more confidence, I, I would have jacking to it say, like a circus chick. I would have... I had to say, people would have thought I had major, major stomach issues. I gotta go to the bathroom again. Was, I gotta go again. It's a problem every day. Oh, especially when you're learning about porn stars. Is it like, not going away or something? Yeah. No, it's just not going away. I get a case of the Gianna Michaels. <laughs> I just found a clip where she slops a dick against her boob, so I'm going to be in the bathroom. It's one of those new diseases, so they had to... <laughs> yeah, I gotta go... They had to name it after her, the yeah. Gianna Michaels. She's a soldier, though. We're all trying to fight our way through. Oh, Steven, did you ever, like, see her outside of that again? Oh, yeah, no, because she was, I mean, I went back the next year because, you know, it's a small town, and I went back the next year, and I played a couple shows with them because they were so short on people. And every time that, like, I would see her, I would be like, hey, Lisa, hey. Oh, and then she would just, like, get so ashamed and just, like, walk away. To the point, and it was got to the point that other people would say, "How come she doesn't like you? She doesn't seem to want to talk to you anymore." And I never told anyone. Well, good, you saved it. After. Good, you saved it. For... Like, I can't. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna fuck with like, no, 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 no. What else? What like? Did she, I, I still want to know? Did she have her cell phone or something else on the music stand? How long ago is this? Uh, I graduated in 2010, so it's probably yeah, it's probably like early. 2010, late 2009. Okay, so, so that's back, the technology. Like, Could have been a sidekick stuff. or something. Yeah, got a fucking. Yeah. And you said she was a uh, she was a uh, horrible looking, but was there you know, like a butterface situation out there? Mm. We, were you able to, at that age? At that age, was she bucks me? Were you able to find something that was like, oh well, I did at least see her pussy, and that yeah. was cool, or something like that, or or was it all just like I hate all of this? It was. You know, knowing you, Jay, you might have liked the muff that was going on. But other than that, it was all bad. Oh, all, all yeah. bad all the time. It's not good. I'm sorry you witnessed mm. that. It's not good. But it was so, it was so, I so wanted to tell some of my buddies that were in the band, that were with me. Like, How come of course you do. That's tough. Like, I can't. But you know what, though? You're good, like, dude, you're good dude, Steven, because that is yeah. a tough one to. So that's an easy, I would almost, break, that would break me. We're like, dude, I got to tell you I this. would probably tell, and then what happened was I feel horrible yes. when I tell those guys, when I go, hey guys, don't tell anyone, and then five days later, three more people come back to you, like, is it true? And you go, yes. fuck. Yes. And you're like, ah, oh, I right, fucked yeah. up. Yes. I fucked up. But, so you really <laughs> saved yourself that one, buddy. Yes. Yeah, so you know, I did tell one of my friends from the band that I'm still friends with, but this was like a year ago. Okay, you're fine. She side faded and disappeared, and, you know, it's probably off running a tow yard somewhere, or being a lumberjack or something, I don't know. But I mean, I yeah, no, I they everybody kept pressing me on it. They're like, hey, 
what happened? Like, I know something happened. Did you fuck her? And I was like, no. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, you're like, oh, no. No. <laughs> uh, but someone fucked her, and that stays her, because there's only two of us. That's right. <laughs> I just admitted everything. Oh, God. <clears throat> uh, well, thanks for calling in, Steven, and, and good job uh, being a good dude. Hey, well, thank you guys very much, and I really appreciate, uh, you know, you guys entertaining all of us, and, you know, it's a... Uh, Keep make the drive home a little bit easier. Thanks, dude. Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> we'll talk right, to you soon, buddy. All right. Oh, that was nice. The same fans are nice. Yeah, and that's how we got to keep them, man. Why if you're mean, you just become a Brad. Yeah, I hope they just. I hope they understand the idea of the difference. I think our fans would between mean and like. We're all laughing together. Yes. Busting balls. We yeah. laugh at each other more than we laugh at ourselves, I should say, more than anyone. I'm so. totally down to make fun of. Um, so I hope people to understand that. I and, think they and do. The show. This oh. is another bonfire. Crackle, crackle, motherfucker. Service announcement. Let's take a little break, yeah? Oh, yes, please. I have to poop so bad. Yeah. It's the bonfire. And now, The Bonfire with Big J. Okerson and Dan Soder. Hello, everybody. I'm Stu Nahan. I'd like you to meet this young man. His name, Jeff Spicoli. And Jeff, congratulations to you. Yeah, so let's get on for a second. You guys are a bunch of, like, 350-pound, like, fucking obese guys talking about watching people piss. Like, that's super fucked up, man. You guys are probably getting paid fuck all to sit around all day and talk on the radio like a bunch of assholes. Maybe you should do something with your life, fucking contribute or something like that. I've been listening to you guys just talk about, you know, how you're getting off to your circle jerk audience, a bunch of fucking 20-year-old kids. Oh, all I need is some tasty waves, cool buzz, and I'm fine. Eagles of Death Metal. It's Eagles of Death Metal Monday on the Bonfire, Sirius XM. 9 to 5, Comedy Central Radio. I'm Dan Soder. That's Big J Okerson. And you are five pounds lighter, buddy. Dude, I just took a mean old dump. And the cast... Was of, it a grumpy? Dude, it was quick. But here's the thing. Did you hold your knees to your shoulders? I, no, I went old school. <laughs> I just picture you, your core strength to really like, pull your knees up to your shoulders. <laughs> I'm breathing different. Holding up. Holding up. But the cast of The Wiz, they were, they were introducing them. Where are they? In the glass bowl. You know how they're doing the new Wiz? Did you see who's in it? Fetty Wap? Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, David Allen Greer I saw. David Allen Greer, who else? But Common. I, uh, I don't know. I was Queen Latifah. I was walking in to take a dump that was about to come out of my butt, and I could hear them, like, kind of the clapping. And then I was like... <clears throat> and it sounded like they were clapping for me shitting. I, I said this to Christine the other day, and I said it to you earlier today, and the Wiz is such a great example of that, actually. Oh, this is perfect! The Wiz, which is, you know... A black, black version Black of Wizard of Oz. Yes. Uh, we said that they've made black versions of a lot of movies that were... So I don't know. I, 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 mean, I guess you can call them white movies, but they Camp, were just mainstream movies. They well, had Can't Buy Me Love was white Can't Buy Me Love. Which became, turned into Can't Buy Me... No, it was a Love, love Don't, don't Cost a Thing. thing. Fang, <laughs> um, with Nick Cannon, our yeah. fave, and then uh, there was the Black Annie. Yep, Last just, singer, and, and I'm Jane sure Fox. there's I'm sure there was a lot of examples about that. So, but I was wondering if anyone's ever put together the sketch idea or the or the short comedy idea of doing a. Uh, there's no white versions of black movies. Yeah, <laughs> there's no. They're not like no remaking wh- like a white fucking. <laughs> Boys in the Hood or a yeah. white menace of society. <laughs> yeah, uh, um, like Boys in the Hood or like, yeah, Men in the Suburbs, Children in the Suburbs. <laughs> yeah. With menace of society, like uh, what's this? Yeah. a real hassle to your parents. We <laughs> <laughs> said this scene from uh, the, the shooting scene from Boys in the Hood. Yeah. Richard! <laughs> My name's Richard and I'm on debate team. <laughs> I'm the best debater out here. I've got a scholarship. I've never had to play one down of football. <laughs> Doughboy. Uh, should be uh, flatbread. Flatbread. Oh, that's flatbread. We he, went make to, that. he went to prep school. <laughs> flatbread. He went to prep school for 17 years for stealing a bag of candy. <laughs> Horse jumping, motherfuckers. I want to I want to talk to David just because I, 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 we're going to get to Kevin. But David in California, real quick, leaning in, he thinks he's cracked the code on why Brad snapped on us. Sure. Which I was wondering. I've heard a few theories. Ah. What's up, David? Hey, guys. How are you? Hey, ah. David. So I think you've got this unintentional formula going. So I've been listening to you guys for a while. I think you're fucking hilarious. But basically, everybody that calls in is the first variable. Because they say, hey, or whatever you guys rule. 
And then it's immediately followed by like 30 seconds to two minutes of you guys making the fuck fun of the way they talk. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. It's always the same. I mean, every fucking time it's the same. And I think it's hilarious. Guys like Brad, who, who clearly have a small penis or whatever, <laughs> freak out because they can't hang. But... You know what no, it you're is? Right, David, David, you're absolutely right, by the way. Yeah. That's why I had to say three times today. I go, it's hilarious. Like, the calls are always like, you know, fuck Brad, he's an asshole, and then we go, hey, we want to talk to Tim, who's want to say fuck Brad, and Tim's like, howdy, gentlemen, we go, howdy, Tim, oh, 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 oh. and then we do that for two minutes, and go, this is exactly what made Brad on Hinge. But you know what it is? It's a small amount of hazing through love. <laughs> it's just love. Uh, and you know what? It's, it's fucking hilarious, especially because somebody will call in and they'll have some story to tell or whatever, and then you guys will just talk over them for like two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> It's fucking great. It's great. Uh, we really are. We suck the most out of everybody. We birthed Not Brad. Really. That's the whole thing. We created Brad. Brad wasn't created. Brad didn't come to the show hating us. Plymouth Rock landed on us. Yes. We right. created Brad. It's our creation. Guys like, guys like Brad hate life in general. Don't yeah. worry about it. Yeah. Well, I was just trying to bring him some joy and... It all fell apart. Well, David, thank you so much. I, I agree. I yeah. think you're right. I think you've cracked. <laughs> I, have no, uh, I have no argument for what you're saying. That's our Da Vinci Code. <laughs> you had it. We didn't have to go to France or nothing. <laughs> we didn't have to, I didn't have to solve a weird riddle. I didn't have to cast a bloated Tom Hanks. Yeah, we go for every member of that family. No, we don't. Son and fun. I draw the line. Oh, at that shit. I defend Colin. Defend <laughs> Tom. <laughs> No, nice calls. Nice See? calls today. We've had but you know what it is? David really did shine a light. It's us. We're the ones that make him angry. Yeah. Do you remember Jill on Long Island? She's a sweet lady. She, Jill gave up, though, huh? Sir, she's gone. Sure, she's a couple sandwiches short of a picnic. <laughs> but she's willing to stick in there. And we just mocked her like she's John J. Rambo. We went, I think we lost her forever, huh? She tweeted to me the other day. and it was she did. It was some nonsensical shit, so I didn't answer. What was it? I don't reward that. Well, you got to tell me what Bless it was. Bless you, Christine. And if you want to come at me, you have to, you have to call in the bonfire. It was something like, you, I think she tagged you in the tweet, too. I don't recall this. But it was like a product question. Like, what should I use to clean my carpets? And you're like, I don't, what, what the fuck are you I wonder if that was like a spam or Was it Facebook? It was straight up. Dude, it was Joe from Long Island. Yeah? Yes. I'll find it. Let me find it. It was product shit? I don't know. Please, was, yeah, find it. It was, it was her asking a question where I was like, Jill, why the fuck... Uh, while you find it, Ben from Alabama's got a, a black movie and a white movie idea, which I love this. <laughs> okay. Ben. Hey guys, it's me again. What's up, buddy? Good to I, see you, Ben. I'm from Alabama, so I, I, I just blasted coke out of my nose. I want you to know that. <laughs> uh, uh, I had to pull over because I can't, I can't imagine anything better than a white version of The Last Dragon. Oh. I, I mean, think about it. Hey, Leroy. Yeah. <laughs> a white guy named Lee. Right to spill. Oh, dude, you're right. You're absolutely right. Sure and and, and the, the ringleader of the bad guys, sure enough. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> oh, who's the master? Absolutely. Sure enough. Damn, where are you, Joe? From Long yeah, I'm, I'm totally down with that. Great call. Very good one, Ben. Thank you, buddy. You rule. Yes, you. Did you find this no. Joe from Long Island? Thing? No, I don't know where it is. Was it all in your mind? Yeah, oh, Jill never existed. Jill died in I'm a fire. Be, we, only, we only have a couple minutes here, so I'm going to start ripping through these calls while you're looking for it. But I want you to find it. Kevin in Miami, taking it back What's to Nogales. Nogales, me. Nogales? What's going on, guys, there? What's up, Kevin? We're here, buddy. What's up, man? I'm calling from Miami. What's good? Pleasure. Hey. I like your Miami confidence. Like, welcome Thanks. to Miami, bro. I, Every day's a party. He's why right. are you doing? You're going, you're going again. right. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm paying close, close attention not to do it. <laughs> I am not. I'm actually, I'm, I live in Fort Lauderdale, but I figured if I said Miami, they'd be like, definitely get this douche canoe on the show right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, no way. Welcome to Miami. I have a, a pretty incredible story for you guys. I used to run a bar out in Chicago, and uh, my buddies actually came to visit for uh, Halloween weekend. Um Lo and behold, within an hour, they're absolutely blacked out. Two uh, two twins walk into the bar, not like uh, identical, but just two twin sisters. One's a little bit older, and uh, my buddy's like, "I got this one. She's mine." And I was like, "All right, man. You know, I'm a wingman for you." And it's pretty easy if your buddy runs the bar, drinks are free, bottles yeah. are free. And yeah, you look like you're the mayor. 
Yeah, of course, but he's one of those guys where he's just a super pretty boy, just dumb as dumb as fucking rock. Yeah, but you kind of need uh, those guys around sometimes. Oh, for sure. So he thinks he's killing it, and then I realized within thirty seconds of meeting these girls that they speak zero English, okay. none, just just th- three, like three of the most of the most stereotypical things you can think of of like two little Mexican girls. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was like, all right, fuck it, whatever, man. If we can make it work, let's make it work. And uh, so I took the one sister and just kind of preoccupied her and, you know, tried to work on my fucking Spanish all night. You ran decoy? And, uh, yeah, of course. And, and my buddy ends up just uh, taking her sister, and he didn't realize, like, he didn't really take a good look at her. He just saw, like, big, big tits and, you know, I guess a cute little accent and took her home. And uh, I called her the next morning, and I was like, hey, man, how was your night? And he's like, she's still here. I got to call you back. And, and he's like, dude, she's, this girl speaks no English. I had no idea how to get her home. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> that's such a like, great, like, the after fuck, like, reality of what <laughs> yeah. you've done. He's like, okay, Ganda, where are you, where do you live? Hotel, no, no, hotel, I live here, no, <laughs> I'm moving here. <laughs> if you're not, he's okay. Uh, all right, so he's trying to get her home. Yeah, so I, I vaguely remember, like, you know, before my night became an absolute blackout, was trying to stop him from taking this girl home. I, I didn't really think he realized what he was doing. So he finally calls me. He's like, yeah, she just left. I just, I just got her in a cab. And I go, dude, do you have any idea that that chick, she, her sister only had one arm. What? To- total, total nub. And he was so blacked out, he had no idea. Not even in the morning when he said goodbye. How, how high up was the nub? We're talking elbow, shoulder? No, like, uh, I'd say like half, like to the forearm. Okay. I mean, that's three-fourths of an arm. Hmm. Still very, if, I'm, very if I'm rounding up, that's an arm. Very crafty. Yeah, that is, though. But, dude, that reminds me Bobby of... Bobby, does it have the bend in the elbow? I don't like nothing about that. It was super awesome, though, because he felt pretty high and mighty about himself, and I loved just fucking pulling the rug out from under him. Oh, yeah. Put my fucking mindset. You think I can't meet a girl? <laughs> yeah, he thought but he, he got... gave me one with two arms. Yeah, you get full girls. You only get 75% of girls. Oh, oh, I know. You'd like dropping the hammer on that, right? Hey, that was a dude. <laughs> That's the best. <laughs> That's what you get. You either drop that hammer, you like it. We actually had a guy uh, way back in uh, early, yeah, way back in early, uh, like, days of doing open mic in Philly. Yeah. There was a guy who was like a dildo of a dude, and he ended up making it out with Kurt Metzger, was actually friends with a, a guy named Jeff who became a girl named Brooke, basically. Yeah. And still very much looked like Jeff, though. Jeff was still peeking out. <laughs> and... uh and they just made out all night, and, and, and we just were telling every other. But I mean, it's also a story. Everything ended fine, but this usually ends in a story where that guy commits suicide, and it's sort of my fault for telling everyone. Yeah. But I was oh. rallying the troops to be like, "He's making out with that guy over there," and everyone's like, Ooh. "Wait, so this guy killed himself?" No, he didn't kill himself. Oh, I said usually these stories end where it's like, oh. but no, no, he just stopped doing comedy. Okay, well, you know, no, like, by the way, not even then. I mean, eventually he did. I'm sorry. No, 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 he was. This was one of those guys with such high confidence. He could be. Like, yeah, I know that was crazy, right? I don't know. He's, like, <laughs> he's moved on. Um, what, or he makes it, he makes you feel weird. We're gonna uh, we no. have to go, Kevin. Thank you so much. Yeah, but we uh, let's just tear through uh, real quick. Carrie, you got an acronym for us, Carrie in California. Oh, hi, you guys. Can you hear me? We can. We're trying to tear through these here. We got to go, but we're gonna try to get everyone okay, here. We I'm can. Gonna do, I'm gonna really quick. Um, it's very mild and kind of librarianish, but <laughs> it's um, how about born rotten. And defensive. Okay. Yeah. No, okay. I like it. Yeah. That's very thank good. you. Yeah, thank it's mild, you no swearing, so whatever. No, That's I good. appreciate that. Okay. Me and me and Dan are talking about doing a kinder, gentler, yeah, uh, episode. I tell you, David's shining some light. I'm not gonna treat the callers the way I have, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, tell your story, Dick Fish. All right. Now, what's what you now you talk, you <laughs> fucking turd? Uh, Carrie, thanks so much for calling. Thank anyway. you. Yeah, okay, thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you. Uh, Jason in California has a black-white movie suggestion. Yeah, well, it's not so much of a suggestion as a movie that was already made. Like, remember Louis C.K. made a movie called Pootie Tang? Right. Chris Rock and, yeah. and uh, J.B. Smoove. And, and uh, you know, that was, honestly, for being a black movie, man, that was the whitest black movie I've ever seen. <laughs> You know what I mean? It was like silly. It was fucking silly. You know yeah. what I mean? It wasn't like like most black movies that are like either like thug or like you know uh, you know just some like raw. You know like the movie Tupac was in. And stuff right. Like that. But, but it is. But it's also again in the world of that. The, that's Pootie Tang is a comedy and meant to be silly. Like yeah. I think I think the 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 more fun ones to do are the serious ones. Are to make the, a, a white version of a very serious higher power. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. yes. Exactly. But thanks, Jason. And, and Thank finally, Frank, Frank, Frank. Frank in Michigan, you got a movie, a black movie to make super white. What's that? <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Uh, so, I, of course, love you guys. I listen to you guys every Monday, Wednesday. I actually have my whole team at work listening to you guys now. But oh, Awesome, uh, man. Thanks, Thank man. you. All right, we're, we're sitting there thinking, like, man, black, black movies that we could do white. And uh, I was like, man, what if they did Barbershop? And yes. One of my good, <laughs> Salon. My, <laughs> yeah, my, my good buddy pointed out, he said, man, they could never do a movie like that. Because if they did the white version, it'd be a short story about a twenty-minute movie of a white guy getting his haircut. Yeah, <laughs> it's called it's called classic cuts. It's just him getting a coupon. It's called Dave, my barber, who yeah. I sort of know. Yeah, we talked about the weather for five of the ten minutes. Uh, we both are a fan of the same football team, but beyond that, it's pretty much a cut and dry relationship. Yeah, maybe we should do White Boomerang, <laughs> called Sociopath, uh, <laughs> Dreidel. Yeah. Um, Frank, thank you so much. Uh, Marble, please call back sometime soon. Weird story, Adam. Thank you guys for calling, but we're not going to be able to get to it today. We will be new, not live, on Wednesday. But True. we did. Uh, we we are pre-recording one for you guys. So you have new content. Oh, we didn't get to the calls we wanted to get and, on, uh, the, on yeah, the. I know. We'll talk about it next Monday because then the episode will play and people will think about the. <laughs> Girls who have banged yeah, their friends' dad. Our timelines are all whacked We're out. We're all That's fucked true. up, man. Like the Terminator franchise. I'm Dan Soder, at Dan Soder on Twitter. That's Big J Okerson. At Big J Okerson on Twitter. It's the bonfire. We love you campers.